Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folari. Uh, today, let's cross over to Kogi State, as it were. And um, as you know, the uh, governorship election is coming up on the 11th of November. All of the um, 18 political parties will be participating in that election, so it promises to be quite an exciting affair. Our guest this morning is Mr. Kun Kingsley Fanwu, is the Commissioner for Information and Communications in Kogi State, as well as the spokesman of uh, the APC uh, Governorship Campaign Council. Uh, a fine morning to you, Honorable Fanwu. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yori, and uh, thank you, viewers around the world. Indeed. Uh, thank you for having me. So, well, I I 11th of uh, November is not all that far away, uh, less than two weeks now as we speak. Uh, so maybe the first thing to find out is, uh, uh, will you give me your impression of um, how well preparations have been? Because by now, uh, everything should have really been at the very, very last stages, if not haven't been completed. Uh, I'm talking about the readiness for the gubernatorial election. Thank you very much. I will take it that as a party and then as a campaign council, we are ready for the massive victory of November 11. We've um, done uh, the major rally in Lokoja uh, covering the three senatorial districts. We've also uh, gone around the three senatorial districts, starting with the Kogi West Senatorial District at Kaba. Uh, from there, we went to Aimba to have the one of the Eastern Senatorial District. Uh, and from there, we had we had the last one at Okene for the Central Central District. So we've been the party that has campaigned hardest. We've been the party that has um, talked to the people more. We've been the party that have gone on consultation more. Uh, we are not um, just banking on the political structure that we have across the state. Uh, we know we need to talk to the people and also get their buy-in and also reassure them that the administration that is coming will consolidate and continue the beautiful legacies of the Yahya Bello administration. Indeed. And um, as one can see from the pictures, it's uh, an event, an upcoming event that um, is taken quite uh, seriously uh, by uh, the citizens of Kogi State. Uh, so um, going by those pictures, uh, apathy is not, is not on the cards at all. That's not one of the things that are a concern, are you? Are they? Yeah, uh, voters' party um, is sort of the bane of um, uh, most elections across the country. Uh, but the forthcoming election in Kogi State promises to be uh, to witness massive turnout of voters. We've taken our time to sensitize the people. It is their duty, it is their responsibility to elect leaders that will lead them. And when they sit at home, then people could take wrong decisions on their behalf by the polling unit. So I think they are buying into the sensitization and orientation uh, of the campaign council, which has been led by the pragmatic minister of steel development, uh, Prince Shaibu Abubakar Audu. So we are going from um, house to house, from uh, village to village, from community to community to woo people to come out and vote and let their votes count. And uh, uh, that is that is a pain of uh, very seriously. So we expect massive turnout of voters. You could see uh, if people could stay in the sun for over six hours at Okene, at Aimba, at Kaba, at Ida, at Chadam, then you know that um, they, are, they are prepared for November 11th. And mm. they will come out massively uh, to make sure that they consolidate what this administration has done in the last seven and a half years. Okay, now it's interesting that you mentioned Prince uh, Abubakar Audu there. Uh, at the time, uh, I, I believe um, he contested on the platform of ANPP and uh, uh, he's an Ingala man. Now I bring that up simply because it leads into my next question uh, of uh, the factors that are likely to, you know, uh, really shape e events, you know, uh, on the day. Uh, in Kogi State, there's always been the situation of the ethnic uh, nationalities involved there. Uh, people tend to look at it along the lines of, well, three major ethnic uh, nationalities, if that is uh, right or wrong. Uh, talking about the Okun, the Igala, and then I think uh, maybe Ebira land and other people will be considered what is referred to politically as the beautiful uh, bride. How much 
um, it, that, that is on one side. How much is that going to really uh, reflect in uh, calculations and attitudes uh, next to um, capability, knowledge, you know, uh, political sagacity? Uh, as an insider, give me, give me your impression of that particular uh, aspect, or indeed whether it is even a factor, this whole business of ethnic nationalities and uh, beautiful brides. Thank you very much. Before the advent of the present administration in the States, it used to be um, the issue of ethnic cards when it comes to political decisions, political determinism and all that. But you know, with this present administration, the people of the state have realized that um, where the leader comes from does not really matter as much as the capacity and competence and readiness of that leader. And that is the reason, you know, the dynamics that will shape the um, November 11, 2023 governorship election will not be based on ethnic considerations. You can even see that the people are rejecting ethnic jingoists in the contest because they believe that it has to be about the capacity, about the capabilities, about the competence, about the readiness, about the qualifications of the candidates that are in that race. And when you look at the candidates that are in the race, you would uh, realize that the one that is uh, promoting the Kogi agenda is Ahmed Usman Ododo of the All Progressives Congress. When you look at the other parties, they are, they are, they are so to say, pandering towards ethnic considerations, which um, have been banished in the political firmament of Kogi State under the leadership of al Haji Ahaya Bello. So, you know, going into that election, ethnic consideration, ethnic jingoism will not be a, a major factor in that election. When you look at uh, the people that are um, in this contest, for instance, you look at the quality of the candidates, which what, what is the quality of the candidates that people are projecting. You know, for us in APC, we are projecting a candidate that is ready. We are projecting a candidate that is qualified. We are projecting a candidate that is competent. We are projecting a candidate that has the capability. We are projecting a candidate that has learned the ropes and understands statecraft under the best governor in the history of the state, al Hadi Yahya Belu. And when you look at the people that are supporting the, 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 the era, the era of monolithic ethnic consideration is gone. When you look at the people that are supporting this candidate, especially starting with the director general of the campaign, uh, his dad was the former governor of the state, one of the best governors that Kogi State produced, and our leader in the APC until he died uh, after the, um, the governorship election of 2015. So for his son to be leading the campaign tells you that the era of ethnic consideration is mm. gone. Mm. Mm. Also, when, when, talking about the, when talking about these considerations, you look at the people that have left their party just because a certain candidate emerged in that party. And they said, no, Kogi cannot, Kogi cannot descend to that level. We cannot get that low. So they decided to move away from that party. The, the immediate, uh, you know, the, the immediate uh, past deputy governor of the state under uh, Haji Idris Wada, architect Yomi Awuni, one of the finest politicians the state had ever produced, had left the PDP to join the APC. He's not saying that... Uh, uh, there are some open people in the contest. Let me go and pitch tent with them. No, he's looking at the Kogi agenda. He's looking at what can unite the state and what can take the development we are witnessing presently forward. Then go to the East. Former Senator Atai Doko, uh, some of the former senators from the East, some of the former House of Rep members from um, Gala, Galamela local government area, some of the former House of Rep members, most of them have decided to move, including Senator Atai Doko from Olama Borough local government area in Kogi East. And when you see it, the, a, a former governorship aspirant also on the platform of the PDP, Eriko, just left yesterday and decamped to the All Progressives Congress. So you can see that it is becoming an aggregation of people who believe in one Kogi state, who believe in a united, prosperous Kogi state, okay. and believes in the sheer prosperity that Ahmed Usman Ododo is bringing through his consolidation and continuity agenda. 
Okay, now that you, you, you brought up your candidate, um, that is um, uh, Usman Ododo, uh, he'll be flying the flag for uh, APC. In fact, uh, we can hear from him. Let's listen. We have come to thank you for all the support you have given us in the past seven years. We have come to thank you for appreciating the work his Excellency, our leader, Alaji Abelo, have done to the good people of Kogi State, ranging from security, education, healthcare, infrastructure, human capital development, and above all, the elimination of violence crimes and communal crisis. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as I have said and I will continue to tell you, this mandate is the mandate for the people. This mandate is a mandate for Kogi United. It's a mandate for the development of our dear state. And as such, we are coming to build on the legacies of His Excellency Alaji Abelo under the Renew Hope agenda of Mr. President. I want to assure you that we will continue to run a peaceful campaign. I am a qualified chartered accountant. I believe in the transformative power of knowledge has been taught by my leader and as such please Kogi State is APC APC is Kogi State nobody should scare you come out November 11 to cast your vote 100% for APC and make sure you protect your vote make sure your vote count don't be scared nobody should intimidate you we will continue to preach peace because we will build, we don't destroy. We benefit when there is peace. We don't exile why there is crisis. Crisis is not our portion. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, well, quite a spirited uh, presentation there. We, have, we still have uh, Honorable Kingsley Fanwo uh, with us. And so that's the candidate of uh, APC that we uh, heard from there. This was at the mega rally that you referred to earlier, right? Re recently. Thank you very much. Uh, you could listen to him, um, his clear thoughts, clear presentations. And that's why when some people, um, when some people come on national television to say uh, he has not come to the television to come and talk, he cannot speak English and all of that, you just laugh. Uh, because in politics, uh, you know, a lot of ludicrous uh, things happen. Uh, you know, somebody who, um, who's school sat, as low as school sat, is being challenged. He's saying that uh, he's, he's challenging the intelligence and uh, the ability to present facts by a chartered accountant, a forensic auditor. You know, you, you can you you now be asking questions that who should be challenging who here? Mm. You know, somebody who went on television and said he presented only his cousin. That cousin is still in contention till today, and then. They asked him, do you have any other, uh, any other qualification? He said, yes. Why did you submit it? He said, they will go and dig into it. So why are you afraid they will dig into your certificates if they are genuine? So you can see that Ahmed Usman Dudu has presented his thoughts in a very clear term. He is not dramatizing. He is not turning campaign to uh, who can dance disco more. <laughs> Government House... Uh, is, is supposed to be manned by serious-minded people, okay. not people who joke about everything, not people who do not think anything serious. 
not people who said. And you could see as he was talking there, you could see his wife beside him. That is, that is, you know, at times in communication, they say when you knock a door and nobody's responding, that door is communicating to you. You know, that is communicating to the Kogi people that okay. he's a responsible man, a mm. responsible husband, a responsible father, a listener, a humble man, a grateful man, and someone who will listen to them. You know, the women folk now know that this is the person they can trust in government house, not someone who has um, um, a lot of allegations about women abuse and all of that. So well, you can see that well, uh, uh, when you look at all of this, sir, when you look at all of this, I, I the understand. of it all yep. is that you have a candidate who has his plans in place, who is prepared, who understands the system, and who is ready to lead from the front. Okay. and consolidate Honourable on the achievement Fawo. of this administration in the past okay. seven and a half years. Indeed. Honorable Fanwo, well, you didn't mention any names, but um, I did introduce you as the uh, uh, spokesperson of the APC uh, Governorship uh, Campaign Council. So there's a lot that perhaps will be expected. Uh, but that is not to uh, deny the fact, I'm sure yourself as an astute politician, uh, to say that there are other formidable you know, names in the race as well. Um, I don't know how you see it, but anyway, you look at it, Dino Melai of the PDP is in there, in there. Muritala Jaka of the SDP, uh, Leke Abejide of ADC, all these people, they are also illustrious um, uh, sons of uh, Kogi State. Um, I understand your enthusiasm, but surely um, APC is not about to just go to bed uh, saying that, nah, this, there's no need to work, to do any work here. Um, because people have also made their mark in different uh, areas and that they are contesting for this. Will, can APC now sort of uh, go and chill and say there's not too much of a challenge here in the light of those names? I'm not sure. I, I, I think that's... Okay, I think it froze a bit. I was just every I was just saying that uh, we were saying earlier that everybody, er, er, well, I want to say everybody, all the eighteen parties have candidates in that race. Yes. And, and the uh, proof was one of the things you saw. Sorry, the campaign you, you, your sound just came uh, back. Uh, you, your sound just came back. Oh, okay. Could you? Uh, okay, I, I said again. I started with that conversation. I started with that conversation uh, that we have consulted more than any other party or candidates with. We've gone around the state more than any other party or candidate. We are speaking with more people than any other party or candidate. So you're not because taking anything for granted? Anything, uh, are, no, 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 we are not taking anything for granted. You know, we, need, we, we know that we need to work hard to be able to talk to our people, not to talk at them. We need to work hard to reassure them that what they are benefiting now under the president's administration, they will even benefit more under the administration of Ahmed Usman Ududu. We are not, it is not that we are underrating um, any any candidates or any political party. You know, immediately he marched as the governorship candidate of the party. He started his consultation. He met with leaders of the state, whether you are in PVP, whether you are in APC, it does not matter. And the fruit have started coming. You know, at Okede, you saw the son of the former governor of the state and the leader of PVP in Kogi State, Alaji Ibrahim Idris. His son, he's one of his, one of, the sons that he took into politics and they are very strong in Kogi is decamped to APC and even addressed the crowd and told them to follow the man who know road. You understand what that means? Yeah, it, it did. That, that was something of a, of a feat. At, uh, PDP's, uh, uh, that was something of a feat. PDP's Ibrahim Idris, uh, he's of Igala land. Yes, they uh, saw. You know, yes. And so you, you can see, you know, and he was telling the people that Follow the man who knows the road. How do you know the road? It is the person who has developed the state, the person who has built schools, hospitals, roads, and a lot of other infrastructure. You, and, you, you know, you, for, for that to happen, it tells you that the other parties are only trying to, you know, um, they are only trying to justify the tickets they, they, they won, either fairly or unfairly. That doesn't matter. But, you know, they are just trying to justify that by also saying they are contesting. Okay. But they know in their minds that APC would win on November 11. You could see some videos a few days ago where uh, two of the uh, candidates who, re who regard themselves as uh, 
uh, as um, very formidable. I think they regard themselves as very formidable. They, they, they said they are come, They said they will work together to stop a common enemy. I, I don't know what the, I don't know what their definition of enmity is. And that tells you that there is fear in their minds. They know that you know the, with the way they are standing, they don't stand any chance. But because they have been preaching ethnic politics, they are finding it difficult to step down for 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 each other. This one is saying it is the turn of my central district. This one is saying it is the turn of my central district. You know, assuming they've been preaching Kogi agenda, it would have been easier for them. So they already been beaten by the bog they breeded. So it, it, is, it is going to be, when you have two failures coming together, what you produce is a better failure. And I, I think um, that, that's what is going to happen okay. on November 11. So we are not taking anything for granted. We okay. know we are formidable. We know we have the political structure. We know we have the people behind us. And we know that... We are the party to beat in that contest. We are confident, but okay. we are not overconfident. Okay, in indeed. As you say, um, because um, I was just looking at the list of candidates, and it is, uh, on paper at least, pending when we begin to hear from them individually, something of an impressive list. You have an admiral in there. Uh, I, uh, you know, I don't need to tell you there's an admiral in there. You know, I have Dr. Samson um, Agada, you know, on Mali of YPP. Uh, but... All of this is just to sort of flesh out the field. But um, as you are projecting um, Ahmed Usman Ododo of the APC, um, yeah, he's lucky in the sense that um, his party is the party of the incumbent uh, governor, uh, Yahya Abelo. And um, so whatever he has done, uh, whatever Yahya Bielo has been able to do is naturally going to stand um, the aspirant, the contestant, in very good stead. So um, that is to one side. So if, as you, you were telling us, that security, health, infrastructure, all of these are things that um, somebody succeeding from his party would naturally be expected to uh, sort of develop upon, uh, develop upon, to sort of uh, build upon. That is to one side. What is the campaign, you know, theme that you know APC is running on this time now in Kogi State? Thank you very much. You know, from his speech, um, from from the speech he delivered um, at Okene, um, the one uh, the ones at Kaba at um, Aiba, uh, you would see where he's um, uh, moving to. Let me also address this. You know, a lot of people would say that. Um, uh, why is GYB so much in this? Is he on the ballot? <laughs> yes, he's not directly on the ballot, but his work of over seven and a half years, his legacies, those are the things on the ballot. And those are the things we would, we would work to protect as a state. We can't go back to um, that era where the state um, was so backward, where there, was, there were no development, where the state was not hard at the center. Now, because of the benefit of having the Yahaya Belu, you could see that Kogi has gone to the center. You could see Kogi State at the center. And, you know, and, um, you know a lot of development has, has, has taken place. So these are the things on the ballot. And these are the things that will work for Ahmed Usman Ododo, who was also part of a system that produced these strings of successes. So the, the, the slogan is consolidation, and continuity. And you know, he listed some of those areas. Security. Kogi was, Kogi was a cesspit of, ins of insecurity before um, GYB came on board. But because of his leadership, because of his robust security architecture, Kogi was able to snag out of that. And it's one of the safest states today. Even as politicians are trying to make it unsafe, the security architecture is, is um, auto-regulating it to ensure that they are the ones who will find it difficult to perpetrate their criminality here, our state will remain safe. When you go to education, you see what he has done in education, the Blue Roof Revolution at the primary school, the secondary school model schools that are, that are all over the state, some of which were commissioned by uh, the former president, uh, Muhammad Buhari, and the tertiary institutions. Go to Kobe State Polytechnic today. Go to the School of Health Technology. Go to um, the College of Education, Angpa. Go to... Um, the Kogi State University, the Prince Abaka Aldo University at Aimba, and the new one that uh, we just established at Costec, which is about three years old, another one has been established at Kaba. Massive infrastructure development is going on there as we speak. And the Kaba people, the Oko people, 
never had such opportunity in the history of the state, not even when we were in Kwara State. So okay. I tell, that. I tell you what, you I, I beg your pardon, that. Honorable Fan, I tell you what, I, I, okay. I, I beg your pardon for interrupting you. I must take a break now, yes. uh, but stay with us, please, because we'll be right back. We'll continue this, and we'll also take calls from uh, our viewers on this, both at home and abroad. Okay, welcome back. And um, well, Oh, by the way, as an aside, uh, as you know, in Nigeria, they say in keeping with the same thing going on around the world, uh, electricity uh, meters uh, will have to be updated, be switched. I don't know how much luck you've had with that. Uh, a lot of people have spoken about uh, difficulties in accessing the um, sites of the distribution you know, uh, companies in order to fix all of these things. But um, it had been said that, look, if you don't do all that you need to do, uh, then by the 1st, which is tomorrow, uh, I believe, yeah, it's tomorrow, then you won't be able to recharge your meters. Anyway, that's not one of our subject matters today. No doubt we'll, we'll come to it because I was just looking at the front of uh, one of the papers and I just saw that um, the discos, the Jenkos are due for renewal revocation uh, November 1. But back to what we're talking about because they tell us that it's not just Nigeria, it's across the world generally. But some Nigerians, many, more than a few Nigerians have spoken about difficulties in accessing uh, fully the portals with which to do what we are asked to do as uh, consumers. Anyhow, we were talking about the upcoming governorship election, November 11, 2023, in Kogi State. And we've been uh, looking um, at you know, the candidates and the factors that are likely to uh, sort of uh, influence uh, what will be happening there. Um, our guest admittedly concerns himself because uh, with uh, the ruling APC because he is indeed spokesman of the APC governing uh, governorship um, campaign council. So you would expect that. But he was saying that that doesn't mean that they're taking anything for granted. And we've been hearing from him that there are many illustrious names in the list. Uh, but naturally, well, apart from he was particularly happy that um, PDP's Ibrahim Idris of Igala land um, has indeed decamped to the ruling party. And um, there might be others that we don't even know about um, immediately. But uh, coming back to you now, Honorable Kingsley uh, Fanwo, who is the Commissioner for Information and Communications in Kogi State, you were just telling us about some of uh, the achievements that will be standing your candidate at Ahmed Usman Ododo of the APC in very, very good stead. Um, you, you had reeled off some of them. The other thing is the governor, the incumbent governor, Yahya Bello, uh, he had a different attitude. Uh, I guess for a long time he's going to be remembered in the Nigerian polity for his, relation, uh, for his um, attitude, if you want, uh, to the whole uh, COVID scare at that time. He had insisted adamantly that that was not a problem in Kogi. So uh, <laughs> and I don't know whether to say that he has probably been proved right now uh, because as the whole world is sort of now gently disillusioning themselves uh, from the whole scare, it looks like uh, the governor was there from the very, very beginning. Um, uh, first of all, your commentary on that, as you probably also will use that to lead into what you know, uh, uh, the governor has been able to do in the area of field of uh, healthcare delivery. Uh, uh, UIB brings um, on board a different uh, brand of leadership. Leadership that is courageous, leadership that is bold, leadership with conviction, leadership that stands with the people. So uh, that. So I beg your pardon, the Honorable. So Honorable, sorry for, sorry for interrupting you, because I do have a Yusuf on the line from Abuja. Uh, well, I, please continue, because I could just hear that I lost Yusuf, who had called in from um, Abuja. But um, please feel free to call in. We'll apologize to the uh, Honorable Commissioner and take your call in as long as you're interested in the upcoming election in Kogi State. Please continue, Honorable. You were telling us about so, so he, he a brings, different He brings on board that kind of leadership. He's bold, he's courageous, he has, he's full of conviction, he leads from the front, and he stands for the people. Uh, so that, that's the reason he told that line, because that was his conviction. And, you know, he was not just talking about it, he was also doing it in Kogi State. And he, what he was preaching was that 
instead of um, celebrating this COVID-19, let us build our health infrastructure in such a way that we'll be able to deal with any kind of ailments in our country instead of uh, taking people abroad. And, you know, he matched his words with action by ensuring that he put in place first class, some of the best hospitals in Africa in Kobe State within that period. And, you know, it is about conviction. And, you know, some people also misunderstand him. He's not someone who, um, he's not someone who is unnecessarily rigid. Something happened last week uh, when he was traveling to Abuja and um, there were some, you know, uh, misunderstanding on the way. And I issued a statement that um, his life was under attack. When he got the full report of what happened, he came back to Nigerians to say, my life was not under attack. What I released at the time was based on what I, uh, the information I was able to get at that time, you know, but it was wrong. And he did not say, oh, because my commissioner already said, no, he did not say that he came to address Nigerians himself, that he was not under attack. You know, that is the kind of leader that GYB is. And, you know, I am also using this opportunity to apologize for uh, that thing that um, happened. It was not deliberate. It was based on what I was able to find out at that time. Okay. So I am trying to use this to describe the kind of leadership qualities you find in Alhaji Yahaya Belo. He is a leader who is courageous. He's bold. He's always with the people. He's always with the truth. And, and you know, that, 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 you, know, you need that kind of leaders uh, in, a, in a country today. And that's why it has okay. been so good here. Indeed. In Ibrahim has called in from Lagos. Let's take Ibrahim in Lagos. In Lagos. Good morning, Ibrahim. Uh, good morning, Uncle Yori. Uh, good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Go ahead uh, with your question or comment. See, in Nigeria politics, uh, until we start to tell our state truth, that is when the development will come in. You understand? I am from Kogi State, the Kinna local government, to be precise. Okay. Okay. So, if you come to the Kinna local government, let's forget about all the social media and uh, television and things that we are talking about. Come to the Kina local government, you see the level of destruction, hunger that our people are passing through under this administration. You are a journalist. You understand? You can go there and make findings by yourself. The road that links from Lokoja to the uh, Kogi Central, ask the man in your studio how it is. There are different things to mention, but few. The, the councillor in my local government is a well-known thug, allegedly. A well-known. You can go and verify. So he has never been to a, a, a secondary school. Okay, he but Ibrahim, when you, to, when you spoke like, about, I beg your pardon, Ibrahim, when you spoke about hunger, um, you, you put that at the doorstep of um, the governor? Come again. What, what you, the first thing you spoke about was the hunger of... Uh, hunger, hunger, hunger. Yes, hunger. AB. Yeah. So uh, well, you, you put that at the at government's doorstep? Yeah, because uh, people, civil servants, are paid percentage on their salaries. Is that how the state should be governed? Yeah. You can go and verify. This is not a mere talk. Very and verify the percentage. I know my uncles, those who are paying on percentage, and some have not even received their salaries at all. Hmm? Okay, I, I, I get you. I hear you. Thank you very much uh, for calling in, Honorable Fanwo. Um, yeah, these are these are some of the these are some of the things we are contending with. We are contending with um, people who make this kind of wide. Um, allegations without empirical, uh, you know, without empirical evidence to support um, what they are saying. Um, yeah, but is, is government owing uh, salaries? Let me, let me, is is just, government owing salaries to workers, me, as that caller no seemed to I, I will indicate? Take, I will take all the things he said, and I will come to the issue of salary. Uh, he is from Dekina local government area, and he won't tell you now that we've um, been able to invest billions of naira to ensure that. We have a teaching hospital and we don't have to take our medical students 
uh, outside of the states. Uh, and all the projects that we have been doing uh, in the Kenya local government, including road projects, there is one that's linking about, um, about four local government area, 56 kilometers. He will not tell you all of that. The Kenya local government used to be the hotbed of uh, criminality in Kogi East um, in the past, where you have um, uh, rival court attacking themselves and all of that. That has been drastically brought to the BRS minimum. And, you know, apart from all of this, you know, he's also talking about um, some of the federal roads in the state. Yes, we've been able to intervene where we can intervene, where our resources could help us to intervene. But it doesn't mean that we can intervene in all of the federal roads um, in the state. Coming to the issue of salary, you see, <laughs> it, it's, it's unfortunate. The state civil servants are not owed a single month. The local government civil servants are not owed a single month. What is happening at the local government level is that their resources cannot carry the overbloated wage bill created by um, the previous administrations where people who did, they did not even need at the local government administration were brought, were brought in. You know, these are some of the issues. And also, you are expending a lot of resources at the local level to ensure security. Security is not a cheap venture. And, you know, at the end of the day, what is left is, is inadequate to be able to pay uh, 100% to civil servants. But instead of what they were paid before, which was 15 to 20%, today we are paying more. And the salary scale, even of the local government councils in COVID state, is the, is the best in the entire northern Nigeria and one of the best in the country. And you can verify from other states too. We know that there are states that have not even paid their local government staff in the past five months. But because of what this administration is, that has given a very high degree of autonomy to local government uh, councils in the state, they are able to pay every month, even right. if they cannot attain the hundred percent of the salary. Uh, and if you say that, I, I beg your pardon. I, I know you might like to continue, I but I, I don't want us to lose James. James has called in from Lokoja. I beg, I beg your pardon. Can you hear me, Hon Honourable Fanwo? Sorry, sorry. Uh, could you hear me, Honorable Fanwo? James called yes, in from Lokoja. Good morning, James. Good morning, sir. All right. Please go ahead. Yeah, I just want to commend the current administration because, to be told, if you look at security architecture of the state, right from um, when he emerged, as a, when he was shown in as the governor of the state, he has really tried a lot. And look at the educational sector, too. I remember when I was in... Um, who he said Polytechnic back then, the, when I went back for my HND, there's a drastic um, um, development that has, that has been put in place in the, play, in the, in the school. And the, the health sector, too, if you look at the, the specialists, the FMC, everything in the state, in all the senatorial districts, the governor has tried in as much as possible to touch every area. And I will support Ododo to, I, I want Ododo to emerge as the governor so that he can continue from the legacy the current governor has put in place. That is just the contribution I want to say. All and right, thank you. For information and communication. God bless you, sir. Well, thank you very much, uh, uh, James, calling in. So, okay, so we, uh, I see that you smile there because this is the way it goes. Mr. Yori, <laughs> different strokes for different folks. People that are in Kobe State are talking now. You know, some people are in Lagos and they've not been going home for many years. But those who are direct beneficiaries of the revolution in the education, in the agriculture, in the security, in the health sector, in the infrastructural revolution in the state, they are the ones that are talking now. Yeah, but they the mere fact that I introduced, sorry, the mere fact that I introduced Ibrahim from Lagos doesn't mean he doesn't know about uh, what's going on in Kogio. You have to yes. be fair. So they need to find out. You know, that, you know, knowledge is power. When you don't have knowledge, one of the candidates was on the national television recently, and he was asked about the revenue um, uh, profile of the state. He, he, do, he did not even know. He, he doesn't know what the state is generating. The state is aspiring to govern. He does not even know what is generating. So how are you going to govern in, in such circumstances? So it is just a matter of you know, drama you know, all over the political uh, landscape of the state. But that is why, you see, people, these people kept promoting this falsehood about salary. One went to one um, private radio, Berekete Radio, um, uh, and you know, when our chief press secretary went there to give out the fact, the man started apologizing. So they are using this for politics. 
they know it is not true. And that is why, no matter the level of this criticism from people who don't even come to the state to understand what is going on there, the people of the state have kept faith with the ruling All Progressive Congress. And that's why we have been winning elections since 2015. Usena uh, in Abuja has also joined the program. Good morning. Morning. Please, I want to ask that man that is talking a question, please. Okay, yeah, it, that's the Commissioner for Information yes, and Communications. Honorable yes, to... Fanwo. Good morning. Yeah. Please, I want to ask that man that is talking question about Friday, Sani Makama. Yes, tell us about Friday, Sani Makama. What is he doing for Kogi State? And why do they have to take him to court? If you are talking about security, people are safe. What makes them safe? And there, even the same thing that you are talking about, workers being paid salary, this is all fraud. It's not true. All this thing you are saying is not true. They should go as cogitated people are suffering. They are dying in pain. And now, Yaya Bello is trying to force another governor on us in cogitated. Yeah, are you still there? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Oh, okay. I'm uh, here. Oh, Usena, I want, uh, okay, but please continue. I think she's finished. I wanted her to finish. Uh, but she, well, she also seems to have a, a, a different view. Okay, uh, thank you very much. You know, fortunately, I love this kind of um, a challenge because, you know, viewers understand the psychology of um, some of these um, callers. And when they make these general views, then you, you tend to understand where they are coming from, and some of their frustration, which are quite political, sectional, and ethnic. Uh, if you are talking about um, Alagi Friday, uh, Makama, uh, that is the man that was appointed to lead a committee to ensure that we mop uh, firearm uh, in the state. We, we realized that in the build-up to the election, some desperate politicians were bringing in arm into the state, and we have um, uh, set up the committee to be able to mop uh, some of these things uh, from circulation. Uh, there are litigations as to um, the appropriate uh, appropriateness of, of that committee, uh, which is in law court. I will not want to comment um, much on that, but I, I can say that they've done um, quite well within the period uh, that they have been working. Uh, that is about that. On salary, I told you, that is, the, that is the joker of the political Confucianists. That is what they want to make the people, oh, it's not paying salaries. I've come out to tell you, and I want your um, correspondents to go to Kogi State and interview state civil servants and find out whether they are being owed salaries or pensions. We have been paying up to date. You know, their welfare is of priority to government. You cannot uh, bring people to work uh, for 30 days uh, in, in, in a month and then not pay them salaries. So we've been paying them 100% and Every month. We are not owing a single month. I told you that where they are having a percentage a payment, which the percentage is even higher than what it used to be under the previous administrations, is mm -hmm. at the local government level. And mm -hmm. I've given you the reasons for that. So okay. um, they will continue to say this. We are not angry about that. The people understand. The civil servants are watching us. They know that for the month of uh, 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 the last month, they've end their salary before the end of that month, and they are going to end this one uh, very soon. So they know. So even if they are saying all these things, they understand it's coming into their accounts, and they are with the government. And on November 11, they will come out again and vote for the government, not minding those who are playing bitter politics. Oh, okay. Well, you call it bitter politics, but um, if I understood the point you made, you said the matter is in court, so you don't want to delve too deeply into it. But did I understand you to say that a committee was set up to mop up uh, you know, arms, small arms. I, I didn't quite get the point um, that yes, you... Yes, that, that was what the committee was uh, meant to do, uh, to ensure that people were unable to bring firearms into the state to come and perpetrate criminality. And those that were already having them, so they would go after them and ensure that they are able to retrieve uh, this firearm before they are used against the citizens of Kobe State. Government's uh, priority is to ensure security, is to ensure that our people are safe, yes. not to have arms. In the, in the hands of untrained people. Okay, so without, as you said, not wanting to go into it because it's already subjudice, um, 
Uh, so who, who took who to court? Who, who, which were the parties that took the matter to court? Um, I think I, I, I overheard that some, some elements, political elements, I would not want to mention their names, they know themselves, who felt threatened that the arm they've brought into the state would then um, be exposed, quickly rushed to the court to go and force the constitution of that um, committee. Uh, but I would not want to go into the details. Indeed. Uh, it is in court, uh, but I know that at the end of the day, um, the people's will and the people's welfare and the people's security will triumph. Okay. And then to end, uh, because we've almost run out of time, it's been quite enjoyable finding out about the political uh, landscape in uh, uh, Kogi. Uh, but w one of the things that uh, I sort of, I think our viewers can take away is that we spoke about the whole ethnic nationalities issue there, and you said, well, that is not something that you can cancel out, but it's not, if I understood you well, uh, a, a very modern kind of trend. Uh, people are not really looking there. They there, they exist, there are the differing nationalities, there will always be what is seen as a dominant uh, sort of a tribe and uh, uh, ethnic nationality. And then the interesting feature of um, the um, uh, uh, beautiful bride syndrome. But you said all of that can, should not be overblown, really, because uh, it's going to be much more about capability and uh, political you know, uh, calculations, if I got you right. In closing. Yes, uh, definitely. You know, I, I, there is no, yeah, the, the ethnic card had crumbled already. You know, okay. those that are using it, they already know that um, it has failed. It's that's why they are work. trying to, that's why they are trying to see if they could um, come together against the formidable party. But the more they come together, the easier it becomes. We also have our own political calculation. So it's going to be about political sagacity. It is going to be about political dynamism, about competence, about capability. All of these, Ododo has them abundantly. Okay. And he's ready for the task ahead. So I, I, um, I, I think you will, you will join us to celebrate on uh, November 12th. <laughs> Indeed. When you would have we we, we certainly far. shall enjoy yeah. reporting. We shall enjoy <laughs> reporting on uh, goings Thank on. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Kingsley Fanwu, Commissioner for Information and Communications in Kogi, as well as a spokesperson of the APC uh, Governorship Campaign Council. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. All right, then. So that's our program. Please join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I am Yori Folare. Bye-bye for now.